and welcome to Lisa's stamp studio. Did you my name. <laughs> I was like, where am I? <laughs> I'm Lisa Percio. Welcome to Lisa's stamp studio. <laughs> my name is Gina Holly, also known as her daughter. <laughs> you can tell it's a Monday. We are so glad that you are here. We're streaming live if you haven't figured that out. Yes. And today is Monday. It's January 30th. The year is 2023. I might be just a little off kilter because baby is growing and I Very have less so. room yes. <laughs> and I can imagine how much less room we're going to have even next month. Yes. It's wonderful. Welcome, welcome. Whether this is your first time or you are returning, we have lots of fun in store for you tonight. We are going to teach you a triple easel step card. Now you're probably thinking, wow, yeah, but we're encompassing six samples for you with various occasions. Yes, and that includes thank you cards, birthday cards, Easter cards, and so much more. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you stick around to when the live stream is over because down in the video description below, we will have linked for you a link to go to the project sheet. Yes, yeah, so you're not gonna to wanna to miss that because that includes cutting dimensions, full color photos, and a complete supply list for all six of our cards. Awesome, you're gonna to love to be able to use that at home as a resource because there's no way yeah. to keep up with all the cutting dimensions when we're demonstrating. And speaking of keeping up, we want to introduce you to tonight's live moderators, obviously. I'm here. She's here, yes. so she's not <laughs> moderating. So the name in blue that you'll see is Bob Curcio, and that is my husband. Or my dad. Better known as Bob the Builder here yeah. at the studio. Bob is here to help provide you with links. Not so good at the stamping part. Well, we love him, but we do. Know. So here for the stamping part, you'll see Marion Lenhart. Now her name is not in blue, but she is very active in your live chat and she can answer all your stamping questions for you. She's a member of our team. Yes, and she's well-versed in everything yeah, stamping. Absolutely, absolutely. And then finally, we would love to chat with you. Yes. So you're gonna to need to log into your YouTube account in order to do that. So when we come back and we read every single comment. We do. We do, so please leave us a comment. We would love to hear your feedback. Now, one thing before we get started, if you are streaming with us for the first time, I wanna share with you a little bit about the Stampin' Up! Custom Starter Kit. Right now, because we are in the midst of Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year, they have uh, three options for you to choose from, which means you get a whole lot of product for a lot less money, and it ships for free, and a continued discount. Now, don't let the word demonstrator throw you because the vast majority of the people on my stamping team are just like you. They are hobby paper crafters that enjoy a discount on their products. Head over to my website and click on join for all the details. I think we're ready. Let's, let's get to it. Okay, let's move those buttons out of the way. And I'm going to start with scoring. Now we're gonna have three different pieces of paper for tonight. The first one is gonna be four and a quarter by 11. Yep, pretty standard card base. Now we're gonna do two score lines. The first one is gonna be at two and three quarters of an inch. Now I love this paper trimmer. Me too. There's a ledge at the top. There's also one at the bottom, which allows you to keep your paper straight because I can't do anything straight. The trimmer includes both the light blade, which is for scoring, and the dark blade, don't cut yourself, Lisa, for cutting. I'm, I'm really having a Monday. It's all right. Yeah. Okay. So I can navigate them up and down out of the way, but they can stay. Look at, I did you make this. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. And so I'm going to do that. Yeah, don't do that. And you know I'm going to bleed like crazy because I'm on blood thinners. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and line it up at two and three quarters right here. And we don't want our DNA all over this. And let's score. This is a really unusual live already. <laughs> now we're going to go to four, five and a half. So five and a half, two and three quarters and five and a half. Okay. That's piece number one. Look at that. Oh, good heavens. Okay. Hold on. Oh, we man, don't want we that. Band -aids oh, here I, now. I do have band-aids. I do. All right. This next piece is going to be three inches by eight inches. And we're going to score it two inches. I'm laughing so hard. Two inches. And then four inches. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. It's going to start to drip all over the place. Okay. Well, grab it real quick. And I can Hold on. You score the yeah. last one. All right. So while she cleans up her crime scene, <laughs> uh, the last one is a two and a quarter by six. And that will also be in your project sheet. But then we're going to score it at one and a half. So I'm going to do that right here. And then we're also going to score it at three. How's it going over there? <laughs> I've got a Band-Aid. I'm wrestling to get it open like record timing so we don't waste their time. It's all okay, good. Here, here we go. So casualties do happen here too. Well, you know what? That was really you stupid. You could have prevented this one. I know. That was like so stupid. All, all right. right. Here we you go. know what? Okay. I, I'm telling you, this whole baby thing, becoming a Nana, has got me just crazy. All right. So you've got yours already scored. Yes. I'm using Evening Evergreen. That's great. I'm using Mossy Meadow. Okay. 
we're going to crease up on those score lines. Yes. So on the long, oh, you need a bone folder? I do, yeah. Okay. Do. Oh. <laughs> this I never am. liked this, I Are swear. Okay? I'm going to fold this in half. I hope you're all laughing right along with us because we love to treat you as if you're here with us. I'm glad it's you and not me because it's I, usually me that's just happening. I really wish it was you. <laughs> Okay. So the big piece is now in half. There's another score line here. Remember, this was the two and three quarter inch. That's going to come down. All right. Now the same is going to happen on these other pieces identically. So you're going to fold it in half. This is a good time to check those score lines along the bottom and sides to make sure they're even. Are you still laughing? I'm still laughing. <laughs> and then this one, again, is in half of the top. So there we go. We got one, right. two, and three. So these are the awesome. bases. You know what? I don't score perfectly. Obviously, can't cut <laughs> perfectly either. So this is a good time to check, make sure those little sides are all measured up. Okay, perfect. What are you going to do next? All right, so I am going to actually decorate some pieces because this card does have pieces. It does, but it's not hard. None of it's, it's hard. It's not hard. Have you put your designer paper on your pieces? No, I have not. Let's, let, you, let's let you do that. Okay, all right. So as you can tell, the great thing about the live stream, when Jean and I demonstrate side by side, we do not design together. No, we're prep have, together. We're prep together. So we get to see it together and go through this very much as if you were here with us. Yeah. So we don't want you to think this is all rehearsed. Now, I chose to add designer series papers to my panels. Okay. Now, these dimensions are all going to be inside your project sheet. Now, look at this paper. It's so beautiful. Okay. Now, let's just put a little pause yeah. on here. Because I've got to show this off. Yeah, I pulled it out. Now, this is called Favored Flowers. And guess what? It's free. It's free right now during Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year, which is called Celebration. For every $50 in product that you spend, you can choose a free product of your choice in the sale brochure. And this is just one of them. Now, if these were pretty, but wait till you see the other side. And that is where I got that paper you see there on my desk. Okay? Oh, I love it. So I love these because uh, they don't have a theme. You can use and, it all year round. And for any occasion. And I don't Look know at those what, colors. And you know what? These totally could be masculine oh, colors. Yeah. Masculine oh, yeah. Beautiful paper. You're going to absolutely love that. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to add the designer series paper to the largest, or in my case, the lower half of my card. Now I'm going to tell you my stamp and seal plus is very very strong and I love to use that silicone craft sheet because I tend to get a little zealous with the adhesive yeah. and if it falls on my craft surface here on my table I'm going to fight that sticky spot forever and ever and so <laughs> I just use the silicone craft sheet to try to make sure that everything is nice and pretty. Okay, so we have another one here. Would and you... I, yeah, I love that, like, so she's putting designer paper on her panels, but I've chosen not to do that. Yeah. And so there is no right or wrong way to do this, just so you know. Yep. I've just chosen not to do that, so you'll see my card completed without those panels. But what I did want to show you is what I'm going to be using today, and it is probably one of my favorites. It's Playing in the Rain. This is from the new mini mm. catalog. It comes with coordinating dies. I mean, come on. What's not to love here? Mm -hmm. Look how cute it is. It has absolutely adorable paper, and I'm using some of it today. So I have cut some pieces already that I'm going to be using, and this is actually all one piece. And what the coolest thing is, I wish you could see it in person or even feel it, is each of these designer papers has this enamel finish that you can feel and see. You can see it's kind of shiny. Yeah. Right there. It's, it's embossed. It's absolutely beautiful. And so I love that because it just makes the card pop a little bit more and I don't have to do any extra work. So what I did was I cut these to size. Remember, these will be in your project sheet. And I've added them to some cardstock backing. This just makes sure that it's extra thick because designer paper is thinner than cardstock. It is. It so is. So that's what I've gone ahead and do. Done. So what have you done so far? All right. Well, I've got these all attached now to those three panels we right. just talked about. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I want to decorate the panels that are going to need Perfect. to be layered on here to make the easels. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to grab those pieces of paper right now. But you know what? I'm going to prep the first one, which okay. is going to be my top panel, my biggest one. Okay. And for this one, I want to do some stamping. What if I told you that this stamp set and die set matches and coordinates with that designer series paper. That's free, by the way. Oh, yeah, by the way. Yeah. So let me just pull this back in here. I want to show this to you. So you'll okay. notice that the images are very, very similar. See? Mm -hmm. But the best part is the die that die cuts this image also can die cut some of the images in the paper. Mm -hmm. So the smaller flowers and the largest flowers. Now I'm going to start and tell you right now 
that the picture of the card I made in your project sheet is different than what I'm going to do tonight because I want to show you both ways. I'll be honest, I like fussy. So I like mixing mediums and all yeah. kinds of things. So I want to give you a little tip about the stamp set that goes with this. And as I said, this is called Fragrant Flowers. So I'm going to be using the black memento ink pad because obviously we're going to do some coloring. Now, the one I'm doing tonight doesn't have coloring. Right. I'm turning that stamp face up on my work surface and I'm inking it this way. It's Simply, just easier. And then you don't miss a spot because yeah. I don't know about you, Especially this is smaller this than yeah, yeah, smaller than the stamp itself. So I'm going to go ahead and put it here on my scratch paper. You want lots of firm, even pressure. Now mm -hmm. I find that I push extra hard in the center. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you, you mean like, neglect the sides. Yeah, we do. So we got to press there too. Yep. You got to trace out that gorgeous image. Look Love at it. that. Isn't it just that gorgeous? So beautifully. It is. It's just beautiful. Now. You're going to need to make sure that the cardstock is dry before you start using your alcohol-based blends markers. And that's because it is alcohol, so it will bleed. Right, so you got to love time-elapsed photography. There's the dry you know, one. TV magic. There's a dry one. Now, the reason I'm going to do a very quick demonstration on this is because when you see the picture of the completed card in the project sheet, you're going to say, how, how? did you do that? Right. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Very important that this is dry. So I'm going to come in with the light Calypso Coral. And of course, you're going to use any colors that you want. They are sold in a combo, so yep. you get the, both the light and the dark of the same shade. Mm -hmm. The cap has a line underneath it, which delineates the size of the tip. Tiny area. Yes. Okay, well, I cheated. You used the big sign. I used the big sign, <laughs> but watch what I did. I swirled all over the whole thing. And I know you're probably thinking... Oh, that's horrible. That's not how you use an alcohol marker. And you're right. You're right. But I'm going to show you. The, oh, my marker's getting dry. You it think? is getting dry. I can see. Okay. So I'm just going to. Probably because you were swirling. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. I use it. This is one of my very favorite Stampin' Blends colors. Okay. So I colored it in. Next thing is you need to let that alcohol base evaporate a little bit. Yeah. If you don't, you're going to have nothing but a blurred mess. Another bleed. Yeah. Exactly. So we're going to. We already had one blood. Yeah. We don't <laughs> need more bleeding. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Chisel tip this time. Now, what I did is I used the stamped image as um, a cheat mark. So yep. you see those little details right here? I just literally went over them. Just a little bit here, a little bit there. You don't have to do them all. And you're going to let that process as well. Mm -hmm. Once that has had time to process, and again, we're speeding things up, yep. you're going to kind of blend that in a little bit. So I'm going to go back over that little area for you here. Okay. I am going to hold this up because I know that you're probably thinking, oh, no, not wait. It's nothing special. Hang on. Here's the secret weapon, is the color lifter. Hmm. I only want to lift color at the tips of these petals to give this more of a realistic appearance because as a flower blooms, the pigmentation is stronger at the center than yep. it is at the tips. So I'm gonna use the chisel tip on this. And again, this is gonna be, have to be good and processed. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add a light coat and it's invisible ink. You're gonna love that. Right around those little tops area of that area. As it processes, you're going to notice it's going to literally start to fade. Now, this is where the pause comes in because I'll show you the other one in a few minutes and all this is going to make sense. Yeah. All right. I'm going to use designer paper tonight. Right. What are you doing? Okay. Fun. Oh, I'm going to tell you. That's fun. This is, this is worth it. Love, I love to color. Yeah. And I just wanted to show you the speed up process because I don't no, really I think you it. have to do one petal at a time. I love it. Okay. So another cool thing about, you know, my stamp set that I'm using, which is applying in the rain, is that it has all these fun pieces. So I have some fun pieces. i got to move you up a little bit. By the way, she's just going to steal the show tonight with this card. I'm just going to tell you right now. No, no. Okay. Oh, yes. So we talked about how dyes cut out designer paper. The great right. thing about applying in the rain is that it does the same thing. So this is actually designer paper and you can kind of see that embossed enamel finish on our turtle oh which is isn't just that adorable so it's in the paper and it's in the paper all right so i wanted to show you how to bring some dimension to flat cardstock right so basically all i did was cut out a a bridge a, a stump and some grass and these are all part of the dies they are part of the dies so you can see that i've already done this to the bridge if i didn't do the bridge it would be flat like this so what i'm going to do is give this stump a little bit of ump okay. let me bring in my grid paper because i'm messy we're messy <laughs> welcome to and apparently we stab we, ourselves we, we bleed okay so i'm using sahara sand i'm going to open that up which i found interesting because you didn't use the same color ink as paper i didn't why you're a, you're a rebel i'm a rebel i love honestly, it you want to know the honest reason right i couldn't find your crumb cake 
And I was like, this is the second best. <laughs> but you know what? This is great for our viewers because they may not have every color paper that exactly. matches the ink. So this was this this is the closest I could find. Okay. So that's what we're going with. Um, and I'm using a dauber. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up a little bit. Now mm -hmm. let me just do a little bit off. And I'm just gonna kind of shook the edges. Yep. I don't really know what it's properly called. We used to, we can't. We call it one. shook when I was younger. So we that's did. what we're going with now. And all you're gonna do is just bring some dimension, some life into this embossed image. And it really does make this flat cardstock come to life. And then what I do is I just kind of like add some in the middle because what's gonna happen is it's gonna go sit in those grooves. Yeah, it's gonna make it look more it's realistic. it's gonna make it pop even more. That's fantastic, I love that. So you did that to the bridge as well, I did correct? that to the bridge, I did that ahead of time. Now they're gonna ask, how do we clean the dauber? Yes. Well, so if you're, we, go ahead. If you're here, we have a dauber for every color. Yes. It's only because we stamp so we stamp much. a lot. But you probably don't have that luxury, or maybe you can't have a dauber for every color. Yep. Take them to the sink, one tiny drop of dishwashing soap and warm water, and rub it until it's clean. Mm -hmm. It will leave a pigmentation on here because it's going to stain it. Exactly. As long as it's clean and dry, you can use it in other colors. And what I like to do is, you know, as you saw, is I just right. like to Get take as excess. much as I can off of it. Absolutely. It makes it cleaning a lot easier. Sure does. Sure does. Now, just like Gina's turtle, I die cut these from the designer series paper I just showed you. So I use the coordinating dies from that stamp set, yep. and that is how I got these. Okay. You need to go on because you've got more to do with yours. <laughs> okay. So okay, get ready to be wowed. I've done some more TV magic because it takes a little bit. But what we're going to be doing is making a shaker middle piece, middle okay. panel. Okay? A, cen a center shaker. Center shaker. Okay. And, you know, I like to, you're really good at what you do. So I always try to, like, step it up. So oh, I had to go that's sweet. shaker. Well, okay. Let me tell you, you are showing me up. <laughs> so let me show you what I did here. So what I did beforehand was I took a piece of window sheet that's sized exactly the same size as this piece right here. Again, okay. in your project sheet. How'd you make the frame? I'm getting there. Oh, sorry. No. So then I took another piece of designer paper. And then I went ahead and used stylus shapes, which is coordinating dies. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, not coordinating dies. Just dies with circles and squares. Right. And I used the second largest one to make a little window. So you nested the large and the, and the second largest together. Yes, exactly. So it looks just like this. Right? Mm -hmm. Now what we're going to do. Okay. And the window sheet is here on the back. So she just yep. adhered it on I the back. Adhered, adhered so it. This is one panel now. One panel. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some foam adhesive strips. Oh, I love these things. If I can get them out. We're having a real day here, aren't we? Alrighty. <laughs> Hopefully it's just contained to me. All right, here we go. So I'm going to grab one. By the way, if you don't know how to make a frame, I have a YouTube short and a video here on my channel. Just in the search line, just write um, die frames and it's going to come right up to teach you how. Okay, awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a piece. This is just not working out. Oh, it's because at the end. You could have taken out the other piece from the package. It's all right. There's quite a few strips in the package. Okay, so I'm going to be going on the right side. That's very important. Make you sure want, you use the back side. So you want the checkered side to be up. Yes, for this card, I want the checkered side to be up. And all I'm going to do is go right along that edge, and then I'm going to take those scissors. My sticky scissors. That's why they have ribbon on them. Yep, so we know that they're sticky. And I'm going to cut cut it right there, and I'm just going to go all the way around. Now, you know what's interesting is a lot of people curve the corners on this. Mm -hmm. And we don't recommend that on designer paper. No. Because the paper is going to bow. So it's very, very important that when you're working with designer series paper that you give extra attention to your adhesives to make sure it's well balanced. If she were to curve that foam adhesive strip around that corner, sure, it's going to fill it and it's going to stick. The problem is, is the paper is going to start to bow like this. And you certainly do not want that when you're creating what she's creating, which is going to be her window. The other really important thing is to make sure that when you cut these pieces, that, sorry, I have a baby bump and everything needs to be closer, <laughs> is that every you need to make sure that these strips are bumped right up against each other. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what's going to happen is whatever you fill it with is going to fall in between these cracks, mm -hmm. and then you don't have a shaker card anymore. Correct. Then you have a mess. You do. Especially if you're using tiny pieces, and I think you're throwing in some tiny I pieces. I am throwing in tiny pieces. Okay. okay. Here so we go. One more, one more strip. One more strip to complete this, and then we can move on. Okay. All right, again, nestle it up really close. Oh, and then... So fun. What is happening here? 
have it's it. because you're at the end. You're, I think you're using the actual frame of the foam adhesive oh, okay. strips, oh, well. which is why it's a little thicker. But you know what? No reason to waste that area, nope. right? And That's how is, I feel about dimensionals too. Yeah, cut up those edges and uh -huh. use them, right? All right, so Perfect. we got we got that going. So okay. this is what it'll look like when you're done. Now I'm going to bring in what I'm going to fill it with, and this is again the exact same size. So is the paper backing still intact? It is for right now. Okay. Okay, so I'm bringing in the loose daisy embellishments. This coordinates with that bundle. It's oh, actually an entire suite. So it's absolutely gorgeous. Let me let me show you them. Okay, here we go. They're so cute, and they're oh, they're I not. Know. I don't. How do you describe these? They're super thin. They're very thin, but they feel like enamel. Like enamel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're so cute. And then I have two other sequins from our sequins everything assortments. Yep. Everything assortments, and I got the pink and I got the blue. So this is what we're going to be doing. Now, an other really important thing is you don't want to fill a shaker too much because then it doesn't shake. Right. So what I recommend is a very, very, very tiny, ooh, I put it in the wrong spot. Very, very, very tiny pinch of each of your shakers. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of there and a little bit of here. And you'll see how she's working in the very, very center. center. Because <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the top piece on top of this other piece and you don't want it to kind of like go everywhere. Oh my gosh, this is adorable. Okay, just, okay, we're done. Now, I'm gonna take this off. I'll do the ceiling job. Yes, thank you. I love these sequins and you can use them individually with some glue dots. I have, I have absolutely loved them. I'm getting more. And you know what, they come in a rainbow of colors, which is great. Yes, and we wanna make sure that's sticking. Is it sticking on the back? No, it's not. Oh yeah, that's because we're live. Wonder why it's not sticking on the back. Rip it off. Let's fix it. You know what? Half of it's sticking. You know what's interesting? I think our viewers think that we never have problems or mistakes. And that is so not the truth. Just rip it off. You know what? And it totally happens to us as well. We are absolutely no different than you. All Perfect. right. There you All go. right. There we go. Hey, yay. I feel like I kind of redeemed myself from stabbing <laughs> myself. Okay. So now, another thing that you need to know is that when you do line it up, it's going to start to static. And so this is gonna go right to the center. Don't be afraid, you have to commit. Right. Which I have a problem with committing when it comes to paper crafting. So this is testing me. So what right. you're doing is aligning what? I'm aligning the top ah. and the bottom, the side to side. And you're gonna gently push, but make sure you push because once you start shaking. Right, you want yeah. contact from the top and bottom. Exactly, so now we have Oh, it's a shaker. So cute. And you can see that's kind of what it looks like. Okay, I cannot wait. Now, what you can do is if you got a little plump in the center, tap it on the table. There you go. And that usually loosens it up. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. All right. All right. So, for my, this is going to be on one of your panels? Yes, this is a panel. All right. So, this is one of the panels now for this easel step. I have cut some other papers here. Okay. This is going to be super duper easy. Um, Gina, you want to work alongside me on yours? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to add these pieces together. I know I'm in the corner of your camera, and I apologize for that, but we're fitting three of us in here now. Three. If we're counting the baby. Future stamper, right? I'm hoping. I hope so. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. Okay. Your adhesive, I think, Do is you have liquid glue? I'm going to need that. Oh, yes, because look what I have it all ready for you. Perfect. So let me talk about this, because yep. some people might be asking. So this, all this is is this multi-purpose liquid glue, known yep. as green glue with, for us. Right. It's in our and, online store. Yep. And all we've done is put it into this silicone-capped precision tip glue bottle. Yep. Now, if you're here and you've been here for a long time, you know, oh, well, my husband's here. Hi, babe. <laughs> and if, if you've been here for a while, you know we use this all the time. This is in our craft room favorites. Now, yep. our craft room favorites aren't Stampin' Up! items, but they're items that aid us with our Stampin' Up! products. Yep. This is one of them, and the reason why I love it, can I demo? Oh, yeah, wait, let me just move this, because the way things are going tonight, I'm going to wear it. That's true. Okay, so the reason why I love it is give it a you shake. can give it there you go. really, really, really tiny. So I love it. Look at those dots, which is perfect when you have very detailed images like the one I'm about to use right here. Correct. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to place a little bit of that liquid glue on the bottom of this turtle's feet. I love that we can drag the needle tip or in mm -hmm. the paper to make it even thinner. Yep. And all you need to do is cap it and this does not dry it out because it's silicone. Store it straight up and down. Really important. Again, yep. in our craft room favorites. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to line that up at the very bottom of this bridge so it looks like our turtles behind the bridge. 
Oh my gosh. Look how adorable. cute. So now it's one piece and easier to work with. Now it's one piece. I added dimensionals to that die cut flower shape. And this is where I'm going to use my take your pick tool. Please don't stab yourself, Lisa. <laughs> Do you ever have moments where you just talk to yourself? You're like, please, you've already done that once today. All right, here is that layer. Careful. That we, I see it, okay. that I talked, that we talked about earlier. I am just going to pivot this here on the paper. So I think I'm going to kind of go, I think I'm going to go this way. Love it. There you go. All right, I'm going to add more to this, but you you go next. Okay, so now I just have to adhere my little guy to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use some dimensionals to do that. Okay. I have my own. I'm going to actually add them to the turtle. I'm not adding them at all to Interesting. the... Because it's just hard. Look at how little those spaces are. Mm, you ever tried balled up glue dots? Yeah, but I, it just get, creates a mess for me. Oh, dear. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Just go along with me. All right. While she's doing that, I want to work on the greeting. I'm going to go to Evening Evergreen Ink. This is the beauty of Stampin' Up! Colors. The coordination is fantastic. You don't have to worry about things not matching. So from that exact same stamp set, there is this huge thanks, which I absolutely love. I'm going to ink that up in the Evening Evergreen, and I'm stamping that here on some scrap white cardstock. Okay? Awesome. I love it. Okay, so oh, I that's so cute. went ahead and I adhered it to, more towards the top, and you'll see why later. We are um, having a cascading effect that's going to happen okay. here. So okay. I want to make sure that our cute little turtle can be seen from all angles. Okay. So he's more at the top, and remember, we made it a shaker. It's so looking cute. super cute. All right, so I use the dies from the stamp set, and I die cut the greeting. Mm -hmm. And I love that that set not only has dies for the images, but dies for the greeting. So this now is going to give me an opportunity to add this here underneath. Now I am going to use dimensionals. Now I'm going to caution you on placement, not necessarily of the placement of the dimensionals here on the banner, which of course, you know, you always want to make them even. I'm a big fan of that for mailing, but I want to caution you on where you're going to put this, which is why I didn't put dimensionals too far underneath here. So I'm going to kind of tuck like so. You know what? This one's going to be just slightly different, I think, than the one in your project sheet. And I'm going to put this here just to add a little bit of pizzazz. All right, so this is my top layer. Love what are you it. doing for your next one? All right, so there is a bottom layer, just a smaller square. This is my middle layer. Okay, go ahead. You go ahead. I'm going to just adhere. Okay, I'm adhering too. Okay, okay so you know what? When you have pretty cardstock, use Let it, it to do the work. Use it to your advantage. Yes. So that beautiful paper is going to work right here in my center panel. Obviously, you can do some stamping. Wait until you see these other cards because I have done that on some of my other samples as well for you to give you more opportunities for ideas on what you can do with the center panel. And awesome. then that's going to go here. And then you've got a lower panel, right? Yes, and that's the one I'm working on right now. Okay, so here's my lower panel, but I stepped this up just a smidgen. So here is my first layer. Let's go ahead and put that on the designer series paper first. Oh, I did the wrong side. Okay, it's just going to be different. All good. Oh, oh well. You know, there's an adhesive pickup in my craft room favorites that works really well. But I think after the stabbing. You just need to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just go. <laughs> or all of the punches. Okay. This is also from the dies. Yep. With the designer series paper. I'm adding this to this panel. I can't wait to show you the alternative to this as well. Go ahead, Gina. Oh, these are my three panels. I'm, oh. like, I'm, I'm ready for you. All right. You're ready for me. Okay. So I'm going to balance these. I'm a big, big fan of that. You know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you have a card that has a lot of embellishments but still meets the one ounce or under for mailing, right. you can ask them to hand stamp it at the post office yep. so they don't put it through the meter, which is the roller. Um, I kind of want to cover up this one because I think it's going to be too, too busy. All right. Here are my three panels. All right. Are we awesome. ready? I'm Here's ready. how we're going to put this together. Let's do it. All right. Do you remember these three pieces? This is what we're going to build upon. So we're going to start with piece number one here. And again, your folds are here at the top. This is piece number two. You are going to add adhesive in this large bottom area here. And I like to use my silicone craft sheet. And I'm going to add my adhesive here, here, and here. Now, this is the Stampin' Seal Plus. We both really love it. It's super duper strong. Yes. You're using something that is not this kind of strength, liquid glue, or just make sure tear and tape, something really strong. Now what we're going to do is we are going to center the bottom of this at the bottom of the base of the card. I am looking on the left side and the right side to do my very best to align these here and here. 
and I'm going to press that in place. Awesome. So I'm going to do mine sideways. Okay. Look at that. I like it sideways. And then I u- actually use my index finger here to make sure that I'm all the way at the bottom good, using good it as a, as a stopper. And then I kind of just peer over. I'm not going to get my head into your camera view. And I'm going to make sure that I have that even spaced area right there and right there. Good. So no designer paper, designer paper layers. And of course, you're going to have dimensions for cutting on both of these. This is now my bottom layer. Add a little more adhesive there. Same thing. This should cascade here at the bottom. You're centering this now on the middle layer. So I'm looking on either side of it once again, bringing it here to the bottom and I'm pressing this in place. Love it. So I'm going to mimic that, what I just did, and just use my pointer finger as the stopper, making sure it's somewhat in the center as best to my abilities. Abilities? <laughs> and it's Monday. go ahead and go. Okay, remember these? All right, now we're gonna show you where these go and then hang around for these other samples. You're gonna be quite wild. They're all very, very different. So my, I'm gonna work from the top down. That's what I do. Now you're probably wondering, this is not gonna fit in an envelope. It does. it does. All right, so this is gonna come down flat, even though it's a score line. Same here, and then same here. This panel right here is going to become your easel. This is where your large panel gets adhered to you can put adhesive here, yes. not here, because we size this to be slightly longer mm-hmm. than this piece. So if you put it here, you might have some sticky in areas you don't want it. So I'm gonna come in here and I am going to take my stamp and seal plus. We're at a really odd angle, aren't we tonight? Yeah, and the bump doesn't And the baby's taking up a lot of space. So I'm taking this now and you're gonna align the bottom with this bottom. Remember I told you the layer that's in my hand is slightly wider than the bottom of this panel here. All right, so we have this. Love it. I'm doing the same method as I did before, using my pointer finger, making sure that it's bumped all the way to the bottom, because I I hate when it's not aligned. I know, especially if it's two different colors, it's very noticeable. All right. All right, this is your center layer. So the exact same thing here, we're gonna fold that center layer down, and we are going to place adhesive here. Um, I can't wait to show you one of my Easter cards because it really is a creative use of this. This beautiful paper now, again, is going to get centered on this panel. Once again, this layer is slightly wider than the panel strip it's being adhered to. All right, I'm doing the same thing. This is my shaker. Here comes her shaker. Here we go. And then I'm just going to center that just how she just explained. And I got to kind of push a little bit differently on this one. So I'm pushing from the front and then again from the back. I don't want to cave in that window shape. Yeah, of course not. Not after all that beautiful work. And then my ugly bottom panel here. So here we go. Here's that bottom flap I'm folding up. And once again, the adhesive is going to go here. And I'm just being a little bit more generous. Which way should we put this? You know what? I kind of want to go this way. It'll bring your eye down. And again, a little bit wider than what you need. And we're going to adhere it here. I want to show you something. These should cascade all the way up. Do you see the space here? That's very, very important. Okay, Gina, you're next. All right, last but not least, my little piece on the back. Okay, now before we show them how this comes together, I want to show you something. I couldn't resist. I couldn't either. Oh, you did it too? I did it. Okay, so we have one more piece, but no, you trumped me. You have two more pieces. Okay, let me show you. I just stamped one of the flowers from the stamp set. I wanted an extra area that was sufficient to either sign my card or handwrite a message. So what I'm going to do is I'm moving these panels down. Remember I told you they collapse. This one is coming back. This area right here, that's where I'm going to put this, all the cutting dimensions in your project sheet. So you put yours there. I actually put mine on the back. Mm -hmm. That was smart, gives you even more room. Yep, so I'm gonna actually put it between this score line and the one at the top. And all I'm gonna do, I should have did this before. Note to self. Well, I mean, it still works. Why it still not? works, but it's definitely a little You don't more... want to press on the window is what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, it's a little about. more tricky. Right. I need bling because I will go into withdrawals if yep. I don't have it. These are the champagne rhinestones. Do not overlook this bling. It coordinates with so many colors. And because of the champagne color, they have a rose red. They go great with corals and petal pinks. So let's go ahead and let's grab some of these. I have two packages because that's how many I use. Let's take this big one. Let's draw our eye down here to that greeting. I'm going to take another one and put it here. And let's take another one. Mm, Let's put it here. All right. Now here on the inside of the flower, if I really want to distract from that dark cardstock, this is where your bling is going to come into play. Now this one's going to be very different 
than the one you have in your project sheet because I accidentally, yeah, it's the, (laughs) you know what, but I think it's a pleasant mistake. Okay, so you've got one more thing. I just have to add the greeting real quick and then I'll I'll talk about the one more thing. Oh, and then she has another thing that she did to her card that gave me a slap in the forehead. Like, why didn't I think of that? All right, so I cut a a strip of designer series paper. Mm -hmm. This will also be in your project sheet. I'm just going to add some adhesive to the back side of this. Using that silicone craft sheet finally, huh? I've been using it all all stream, okay? <laughs> she gives me a hard time because I used to never like to use it. Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure this goes all the way at the bottom. And the reason why... Oh, it was genius. I was like, why didn't I think of that? Is because I thought this needed a stopper or a bumper. Okay, so let's show you how this goes. All right, so when you close the card, all the panels are going to go flat, okay? Like this. And it fits inside an envelope. Fits inside an envelope. Now listen, I made mine pretty thick. Mine too. Of course, hers with the window, so you're going to need a bubble envelope. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go this crazy. No, please don't. (laughs) So watch. This is going to go up here and it stops behind this easel. Mm -hmm. This one's going to go here and stops behind this easel. Mm -hmm. And this one's going to go here. But you're going to see that mine slides a little bit forward, which I really don't have a problem with. But look at hers, smarty pants. It stops. That little tiny bit of designer series paper created the perfect stopper for hers. And then once again, it's going to be like this. Yep. All right. Now wait until you see these other cards. Okay. You want to go first, Gina? Uh, I had to put mine together because I came here. So. Oh, okay. You go first. All right. Here's my next one. This uses the Easter Bunny bundle. This is the Easter Bunny stamp set and the Bunny Easter Bunny punch. Now, spoiler alert. This is going to be my March online card class focus, and you are not going to want to miss these cards. I just finished them over the weekend. Here is my card. Check this out. You might be wondering, how did you do that? Well, I'm going to be teaching that in my March online card class, but basically you can use your alcohol-based marker on colored cardstock. All right, and then here is my easel number one. Here is easel number two. This one I decorated. I love it so cute. Okay, created a faux hill here with some dies. Added him here, and then here is my bottom one. Now this one floats, which I kind of really, really like because then when you lift it, I left space here to do my greeting versus having added it here. But of course you can add extras if you'd want. So that's two. All right, my next one is actually a Valentine's Day card using the share milkshake. Oh, so this is what it looks like all stacked. Okay, I'll show you each individual piece. So this is the bottom. So cute. Then we have this cute, Little scoop of ice cream. What a great use of yes. that paper. So this is the, what's the proper name? Metallic brush something. Okay, metallic <laughs> brush gold and I think silver. And it, it's perfect for the dyes. It's and a brand new paper. And then this is the final panel. And you know it's not a Gina Holly card if we don't make a pocket. Pocket. Look what you did. So we made a pocket. This is in your project sheet. And it's a pull out, so you don't have to worry about uh, where you're going to sign because you just put it there. Another oh, great idea is putting a gift card there. Yes. Or a picture. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm going to sneak this one in. This is the one that's inside your project sheet. This is the one I colored. I know. Isn't that gorgeous? So beautiful. So you can see the color lifter on the tips of those petals. And listen. I didn't take hours to do this. I took a little here, a little there, a little here, a little there. It lifted the color and I was super happy. Okay, now this one has the correct panel. I use the opposite side, but there you go. That's how this one looks. This is the one inside your project sheet. All right, I've got two more, Gina. What do you got? Got last one. So this is using a f- Taco Fiesta. Taco Fiesta. I was just about to say party. Love Fiesta. it. Love it. I love it. Love this stamp set. If you know me, I love whimsical. So this was right up my alley. So holy guacamole, it's your birthday. Just use some blends to color that. Here's some awesome designer series paper. You don't have to decorate the middle panel. Right. Everyone should know that. And then the bottom panel, I just had the pinata. I put it up on some dimensionals so you could see it. Added some bling. And on the back, we have our Mr. (laughs) Mr. Cactus. And this is where you can do some writing. That is precious. And I love that color. Fresh Freesia. I love that color. I love how you did the pinata. All right. This next... One uses the stamp set called Silly Goose. Oh, isn't that adorable? No dies, just a single stamp set. Are you ready? Here we go. Same paper, Gina, that Love you it. used. Okay, it's called Rain or Shine. Mm-hmm. All right. I did fussy cut this. It was not hard, okay? Just leave the areas that are nasty. Don't cut in the middle of there. Make your life easy. So here's this first one. A Silly Goose told me it's your birthday. 
using some fabulous designer series paper in the middle. And then, of course, this one says sending gaggles of good wishes. Cute. So this is my panel here. I didn't put the stopper, which would have been a really great idea. But again, I have an area here that says happy birthday. All right. My final one is using, oh, I have fallen in love with this bundle. Mm -hmm. It's called Mirror Gold Moments. And you're going to see me use more and more of this. It doesn't look like much, does it? But wait, here we go. This is your bonus. This is not inside your Correct. project sheet. Okay, this is why I have one more than Gina. This is my practice card for today, but I want to share this with you. So I used the Fresh Freesia. Once again, I stamped off on the solid image that two steps this. So easy. Look at this. This designer series paper is Dainty Flowers and it's so free. <laughs> this is the side of the paper that doesn't have the dainty flowers. And look, I stole her little stopper idea. <laughs> I was concerned that it would buckle because I have designer paper and cardstock, but it worked great. I think it works fantastic. So here are all my panels here. And again, these all close down. And then here is my inside Love where it. you can write or sign. So bonus for tonight. And then these others are the ones that are inside your project sheet. Lots and lots and lots of great. ideas for you tonight. Now, you know what? As always, we want to know which one is your favorite. Yes. Do us a favor and chime in down in the comments below. We read every single one yeah. of your comments, whether yeah. you're live here or in the replay. Thanks for the beginning debacle. I really appreciate that. But <laughs> guess what? We are going to do a live Q&A with you in just a few minutes. Don't yeah. go away. We've got a couple of things we want to tell you. The live Q&A allows you to present yourself with a question to us. Yep. And we can focus it right here on the screen. But in order for us to filter through all the comments, you're going to need to type the letter Q in a colon and then your question. Yep. So please start doing that now. Now, for the rest of you, there's a couple things we want you to know about. First and foremost is this. Our stamp Studio memberships. We're going to talk about the Stamp Studio memberships. For $5 a month, you are going to get a tutorial in your inbox every Monday morning at 9 a.m. There's many of you here with us live streaming tonight. I can see your names that are already subscribed. We have had hundreds of you sign up. We are thrilled. Thank you so much. So guess what? What's so special about this? Well, the photo is not watermarked and we give you full reign to use it however you want. Copy, dis redistribute them. You can case them for classes or workshops if you're teaching those, whether you're a demonstrator or perhaps you do them at assisted living facilities, you're gonna love the projects. We have everything from something simple that you can mass produce, but pretty, clear to a stepped up version. So you can find all the information over on my website under memberships. Okay, <laughs> so we wanted to come back and let you know also about the next live stream. I will be live with you next Wednesday. Yes. That's February 8th. I have a terrific fun February. Fun. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. No, sorry. I know. It's fine. I not believe it. I have a terrific fun fold for you, and we will be kicking off the online card class. Yes. Now, for those of you that were with me on the private Live with Lisa event, which is part of my ordering rewards, you can find out that information on my website. Uh, you got a quick glimpse of those, of those cards, and they are a wow. So you're going to want to make sure you mark your calendar to be here. If you have not subscribed, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon and the word all. Yep. That's going to give you reminders when I'm live streaming with and without her. <laughs> and if you would, if you have enjoyed tonight's video, we would love a thumbs up here on YouTube. It helps us immensely. Head over to my website if you are brand new. Scroll right down to the bottom and the word subscribe. If you click on it, that'll sign you up for my free weekly e-newsletter that gives you a free tutorial, mm -hmm. no holds barred, that comes right to your inbox every Thursday. All right, if you are leaving us, thank you so much for joining us, and I will see you next Wednesday. All right, for the rest of you, this is the very informal part, yes. and we are going to answer your questions here on the live stream. We'll do about five of them, I think. So I'm going to let Gina, because she's closest to the mouse tonight, handle the little mouse, and she's going to type in the cue in the colon so we can filter those and then answer your questions. But thank you so much for being here. All right, there's a lot of them, and they scroll very rapidly, so just give her a minute. Okay. And then when she's ready, she can feature the question right here on the screen. All right. This one's from Joan. What does she say? When is your grandbaby arriving? Oh, uh, my gosh. So first, second week of May. Yeah. So the original, well, the original date's been changed. But right now yep. it's May 8th. Or May 4th. Or I've been told a few different things. Yeah. So <laughs> we're really excited. Can you tell? <laughs> Very excited.
Alrighty. We knew we'd get baby questions tonight. We did. Yeah, we expected that. We love that we have 100,000 aunties. Thank you all. <laughs> Our and next uncles. question's from Joan. She said, I'm wondering what your favorite embellishments are. Mm. Well, for me, it's anything that has bling. So it would be rhinestones. So totally, totally rhinestones for me. I'm actually liking the milky dots right now that are Ooh. in the mini catalog. Ooh. Don't overlook them. They're amazing. And they also have this um, almost vanilla yeah. a color to one of them. Something so we really haven't you had. you can use it on anything. You don't have to color coordinate it. Yeah. It's a great question, Joan. Yeah, but I'm a bling girl. I love the rhinestones. All right. Next question. All righty. Can you read it? Sure. Lisa and Gina, these cards are amazing. How can I be sure the recipients understand how to stand them up? You know what? We get asked this question an awful lot. So you know what we do? We hand it to Bob the Builder and we say, do you know how to figure out this card? And guess what? And under a minute, the man figures out the card. Now you might be saying, well, that's Bob the Builder. He's lived with you as a stamper for 25 years. Mm, not necessarily. If you are not certain, there's a couple things that you can do. Some of my customers have told me they put a little note on a post-it note on the insert of the card that says you can stand up this card by tucking the panels as an easel. Some of them actually send a photograph and an email once the card has been received so the receiver knows how to actually position it on their mantle or their desk to display it. If you've got an idea on how you tell your receivers, let us know. We would love to see that in the comments. All right, another question is, will you be showing us that baby bump, Gina, so we can guess the sex of the baby? You can see it, you can't see it here because there's no way that I can get all the no, way up here. No, we don't want her on a we don't want her on a ladder. <laughs> um, but you can go to Facebook, our Facebook business, uh, page. business page. This is Lisa Stamp Studio. We posted a photo there today. I'm there. I will be three third trimester. Yeah. I almost said three weeks. That's not true. <laughs> third trimester tomorrow, so you can give your best guess. You're starting seven months. Starting seven months. Wow. Pretty yeah. soon it's going to be a tight fit. If you've been here with us, you know that we work in a corner and this is a tight fit already. And now we have baby, which marks <laughs> three. And I'm not complaining. It's really lots of fun. Next question is from Bia. Uh, how long did it take you to make each card? It really does depend. Ooh. Um, I make a prototype from scrap yep. paper first before yep. I ever make a card because I need to be able to work out all the kinks. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes if I think I know what the dimensions are, I end up changing it because it doesn't work or it yeah. doesn't teach easily, which means there's too many sixteenths and weird things you got to do. I try to simplify it. Yeah. But then once I've got the template made down, do you make a template? Well, I use yours. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> That's what your mom is for. Well, once the template is done and then I start with the first card and I always start with the designer series paper first. So if I'm going to use designer series paper, I choose that first. And the reason why is it determines the colors for the image because there's nothing worse than coloring a really beautiful flower and you're like, I didn't get the designer paper I wanted for this. So that's what I choose first. One card can easily take me an hour once I have the pattern down. Yeah, I think for me too, like I create as or I design as I'm creating. So I'm choosing what stamps and paper I want to use, but then I don't really know. Like I didn't know I was making a shaker card. When I was designing that card, right. I came up with it, it as I was going. Mm -hmm. So that card took me two hours easily. Yeah, to design but, it, to design it. But, like, if I'm putting it together from scratch, you kind of just saw me do it in 30, 30 minutes, but yeah. I pre-cut things. So right. I would say 45, 50 minutes. Yeah. yeah. For a really fun, full, detailed card, including this shaker that she mm -hmm. did or the pocket card, you're going to allocate a little bit more time. Yeah. When you're learning something for the first time, give yourself a lot of grace you're learning. Yes. But I will tell you, now that I know how to make this card, I banged out that... Um, Card. Yeah, you did that like 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. Start to finish yeah. all the cutting and everything. Yeah. That was a really good question. We can take one more tonight. Um, okay. All right. They're scrolling quickly. Bear with us here. We love that you have questions that we can answer them live. Thank you. Thank you for staying here and being with us. All right. Last question. Okay. She's picking one. Um, Donna says, do you live close to each other mm -hmm. to craft together? Sort mm -hmm. of. We used to. We sort of live close to each other. We live two hours away from each other now. I don't call that close when she was 25 minutes away. Pretty close. But <laughs> um, my wonderful son-in-law took a job opportunity up in Gainesville, Florida. At so the there, University of Florida. Yes, he's the yes. director of communications there. We're very proud of him. For the College of Medicine. For the College of Medicine. We're extra <laughs> proud of him. Yes, he has a PhD. We're super proud of him. We love Cody. He's amazing. But they moved two hours away, and um, I cried my eyes out, I would say. You are I, not happy. I was speechless. But you know what? It's okay, because guess what? When they come and visit, which she is right now, 
I get her uninterrupted 24 seven, the entire time that they're here. And I absolutely love that, which is something we didn't get to I do. I think our time is more purposeful now. Yeah. Whereas before it was kind of like, oh, we're seeing you again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I want to just meet yeah. for dinner. It's an hour and then they go. But yeah, this has just really been deliberate mm-hmm. visits and we've really, really enjoyed it. So no, we don't get to craft together like we want, but you know what we, we also do? We never did do that though. No, we didn't. We never did. We've like, been crafting together since I was five. So it's kind of like. We're the, over that. The new, it's, but the you know what we gone. do? Virtual craft. Sometimes. Yeah. So in other words, if I've designed something and I've been looking at it for two days trying to come up with a template and I'm just trying to work out all the kinks, I'll send her a picture and say, or I'll FaceTime her, what do you think of this? And then she'll chime in and then the same with Vice hers. Works. So I guess if that's crafting together, we do it virtually. We do it a lot. That's a great, great question. Yep. Thank you all for being here with us tonight. I'm thrilled that you could join us and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Have a blessed evening. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.